Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor Jim Pytel and today we'll take a quick look at an example motor drive, in this case an Omron 3G 3JX AE004. Our objective is to examine the specifications and physical layout of an Omron 3G 3JX AE004 motor drive. This lecture is predicated on the assumption the viewers watch the Introduction to Motor Drives lecture available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. This lecture in no way is meant to be neither an exhaustive review nor an endorsement of this product or manufacturer. This brief examination is meant to be solely a practical exercise of the contents in the above reference lecture. The Omron 3G 3JX AE004 motor drive is part of the SysDrive JX series of compact simplified inverters manufactured by Omron. The nameplate affixed to the side specifies this motor drive is an Omron 3G 3JX AE004. Interpreting this part number is astoundingly easy. The manufacturer's data sheet shows four entries, the model, the enclosure rating, the voltage class, and motor capacity. Not all combinations of these entries are available. The model is obviously a 3G 3JX. The enclosure rating of A specifies it can be panel or closed wall mounted. The voltage class entry of E specifies this motor drive can use single or three phase AC with a nominal 200 volt input. The nameplate further specifies this value could be 200 to 240 volts, as well as indicates current draw for a given input condition. The motor capacity entry of 004 specifies this drive is intended to operate a 400 watt or roughly half horsepower motor. The nameplate additionally specifies that this motor drive is capable of producing nominal 200 volt three phase AC output in a range of 0.5 to 400 hertz. A view of the front panel shows several user interface elements. In what I consider a severe transgression of terminology, Omron, for some inexplicable reason, has grouped this collection as the digital operator group. I don't like the term digital, and I'm of the opinion the title manual operator group be far more apt description of this group's intended function since elements within this group are intended to be used by an operator for direct manual operation of the motor drive. Nonetheless, the digital operator group contains the data display, the run button, the stop reset button, the frequency adjustment knob, the mode button, increment and decrement buttons, enter, and several indicator LEDs. The data display displays relevant data such as frequency reference, output current, or other parameter values. The run button activates the motor using the pre-programmed parameters when the digital operator mode is selected. The stop reset button decelerates the motor using the pre-programmed parameters when the digital operator mode is selected. If the motor drive has experienced an error, this button will also reset it. The frequency adjustment knob changes the output frequency of the drive when the digital operator mode is selected. The mode button switches between different functions namely monitor or display functions preceded by a D, basic functions preceded by an F, extended functions preceded by an A, initialization and protection functions preceded by a B, communication functions preceded by a C, and motor settings preceded by an H. We'll come back to explain various elements of these different modes when we learn to program this motor drive. The increment and decrement buttons change settings and navigate within the different modes. The enter key enters and saves the set value. In addition to the data display, the digital operator group includes several indicator LEDs. The power LED is lit when the motor drive is powered up. The alarm LED is lit when the motor drive experiences an error. The run LED is lit when the motor drive is actively accelerating, running, or decelerating a motor. The program LED is lit when parameters of the motor drive are being adjusted. The Hertz and Amp LEDs are lit to accompany numerical data displayed on the data display with the appropriate units. Finally, the LEDs above the run button and the frequency adjustment knob are lit when the motor drive is programmed to allow manual direct operation using elements within the digital operator group. If these LEDs are not lit, the motor drive is under remote control. The front panel also includes an accessory RJ45 jack communications port under a cover. When we flip the motor drive over, we see the heat sink on the back. Before we finish the external inspection of the motor drive, notice the conspicuous warning on the front panel that tells you a possibility of severe death exists if you don't wait for the motor drive to discharge a specified length of time after disconnecting it. The rest of the motor drive can be inspected using the associated standard connection diagram. Note the motor drive includes three phase inputs, L1, L2, and L3, 
as well as a ground connection on top. To access these terminals, one needs to remove the front plate and top cover. For single phase AC operation, the diagram indicates L1 in neutral would be connected to L1 and L3. Additionally note the standard connection diagram indicates a circuit breaker must be installed between the power supply and the motor drive for disconnection purposes. Note this motor drive necessitates no additional power connection to power the device itself. This motor drive is powered using the primary L1 to L3 connections. The motor drive T1, T2, and T3 outputs and accessory output connections appear on the bottom. To access these terminals, one needs to remove the front plate and bottom cover. Note the standard connection diagram indicates accessory connections and a DC reactor and braking unit. Note the manufacturer installed shorting bar underneath the sticker on those connections reserved for a DC reactor. To examine the rest of the connections, we need to remove the front plate. Note two micro switches, S7 and S8, respectively configure the motor drive for serial communications and emergency shutoff functions. Note the default state of these switches. Additionally note the open front plate has exposed manufacturer test points and two rows of accessory terminals. The small row of three terminals on the left belong to an output relay, respectively left to right, MB, MA, and MC. MC is the common terminal for a single pull double throw transfer contact consisting of the normally closed MA side and the normally open MB side. Note the states of the contacts, normally closed for MA and normally open for MB are defined when the motor drive is connected to primary input voltage. The output relay can be used to coordinate the activation and deactivation of an accessory electrically released friction brake among many other purposes. We'll examine applications of the output relay in later lectures. Elements within the remaining larger row of terminals can be categorized using several different groups. First, the frequency reference group, the multifunction input group, and finally, the multifunction output group. Left to right, the terminals go AM, FS, FV, FI, and FC in the frequency reference group, S5 through S1 and SC in the multifunction digital input group, and PC and P1 in the multifunction digital output group. The remaining two terminals consist of an internal 24 volt DC power supply connection, P24, as well as an input power supply connection, PSC. It's kind of hard to tell from the angle of this photograph, but note there's a short circuit bar pre-installed between P24 and PSC. This might seem like total nonsense to you right now, but the location of the short circuit bar determines if the motor drive uses sync logic or source logic. When the short circuit bar is installed between P24 and PSC, the motor drive assumes sync logic. When the short circuit bar is repositioned between PSC and SC, the motor drive assumes source logic. For now, we can ignore this sync and source nonsense and examine this at a later date. Let's describe the other input terminals in a little more detail. The frequency reference group includes both inputs and outputs. As indicated in the standard connection diagram, FS, FV, and FC are meant to be input connections for an external speed potentiometer used to provide an analog voltage signal proportional to the desired frequency input. FS is an internal positive 10 volt DC source used for frequency reference purposes. FC is the frequency reference common. FV is the variable frequency reference input. As position of the external speed potentiometer is changed, so too would the analog voltage input signal at the FV terminal. FI is an alternative frequency reference input that rather than using analog voltage signal from zero to 10 volts, it's anticipating an analog current input from 4 to 20 milliamperes. Additionally, the frequency reference group also includes an analog monitor output, AM. Depending on the program function, AM can provide a proportional representation of either the frequency or the current output by the drive. The multifunction digital input group consists of five user programmable switched inputs, S1 through S5, as well as a switch common SC shared by all inputs. Depending upon how the motor drive is programmed, these inputs can be assigned different functions, like forward or reverse. Similarly, the multifunction digital output group consists of a single user programmable switched output, P1, and a common, PC. Depending on how the motor drive is programmed, this switched output can perform several different functions. By default, 
P1 is normally open, however, a user can change this deactivated state to normally closed. How different is this commercially available motor drive from the generic block diagram I used in the Introduction to Motor Drives lecture? Not much. Similarities include primary three-phase AC inputs and outputs, manual operators, a communication port, and the inclusion of accessory multifunction digital and analog inputs and outputs. Really, only the number of inputs and outputs has changed between the generic block diagram and the specific drive. That, everything is pretty much multifunction rather than being fixed. Really, only fixed function inputs that aren't user customizable are those reserved in the frequency reference group. Differences include subtle alterations in the attachment points for accessory DC reactors and braking resistors, the inclusion of an accessory electromechanical output relay, which if you think about it, is kind of like a different type of digital output, and finally the fact that the Omron 3G 3JX AE004 doesn't necessitate an external power supply, but rather powers its internal functions from the existing L1, L2, and L3 primary connections. All right, that's about it for this initial inspection of an Omron 3G 3JX AE004 motor drive. We learned to read this motor drive's nameplate data and nominal specifications, interpret the part number, identify elements in the poorly named digital operator group reserved for direct manual operation, identify location of primary inputs and outputs, as well as identify the terminals and functions of the output relay, the frequency reference group, the multifunction digital input group, the multifunction digital output group, and the internal power supply. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.